Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 36 of the Fair Housing Insiders. And today's topic is on fair housing and compliance monitoring. Very important topic. And Kathy is going to lead us in the right direction, as always, and why we need to think about this topic and some scenarios that would apply with this topic. So uh, welcome, Kathy, to the show. Nice to have you with us again today. Thanks, Jonathan. Looking forward to talking about this subject. Yeah. So as we were preparing for this show, boy, it opened up a whole big conversation of different situations where compliance monitoring would come in. Maybe we, before we kind of get into our scenes and, and those particular situations, what do you think a property management company, big or small, should be putting in place or considering uh, when it comes to compliance monitoring? What are your thoughts on that? You know, this is something that um, I've been very concerned about for a long time. Um, some of you may know that I started my career in fair housing, uh, working at HUD and um, prosecuting cases and doing investigations, uh, pretty intense investigations sometimes um, for the Office of uh, Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity. And I was always amazed at things that the investigators found in uh, the files of the companies that we were investigating. So then I left HUD and uh, formed uh, the Fair Housing Institute and in my law firm. And so I've been working on behalf of housing providers since then, trying to correct the continual problem of being able to justify the decisions that were made regarding to this resident or that resident. So one of the issues that is very important is that if there are problems in the way the staff does things, and certainly the way files are kept and, and actions are documented, that the company catch it first and not wait until an auditor from an outside agency is there, and especially a fair housing investigator who finds things in the file that are not consistent and are not justified. And, you know, it could be that that inconsistency was very perfectly uh, justified. It was non-discriminatory. In other words, that's what we worry about from the fair housing standpoint. But if it wasn't properly documented, we don't know why it was done that way. And an investigator is always going to assume the worst, unfortunately. So being able to um, set up regular supervision of the actions and the documentation of staff is a critical function of being able to stay out of fair housing problems. For some of the big companies, they have big compliance departments that can do that. Um, for some of the smaller companies, they don't have that staffing set up to do that. So they have to work it into their existing supervisory staff's responsibility. So those are the kind of things, and some of those things are particularly fair housing oriented. And that's what I was hoping we could talk about today, Jonathan, is what are the topics that should be, there should be a checklist for them in a supervisor's file, be it the regional supervisor and they're supervising an entire property, the supervisor, the managing uh, or the manager of a property and who is supervising leasing agents and their files, how they keep their files, what they put in those files. Right. And if there's a checklist like that and everyone is looking, hopefully problems can be caught. And, and that might need to, you know, those lessons learned from that supervision might be able to be used then in training to correct it for everybody and make sure that it's not a common problem. Right. Very good. I appreciate that. That's, that's a nice explanation. There's something that I know we've talked about in previous shows too on documentation and why this is so important. But 
I, I look at it from the perspective of like, why would you want to have this? Well, we don't remember everything too, right? Like it's hard to, we don't want to be in that situation. So get it right. And when we're dealing with that, with the resident, make sure we have everything down, trying to go back even sometimes a week later or two weeks later, our, our memory may, may fail us in some way. So it's just important to make sure that we have everything all itemized and we'll have a list too for everyone to what Kathy was referring to. It'll be in the show notes and on the blog of what that list, what that list is going to be for you. Some suggested items to take a look at. So why don't we look at a scenario now, uh, Kathy, and uh, this will help our audience really understand, okay, well, what are we talking about? What are some potential instances where, some extra notes are needed. We need to make some documentation. And so this scenario, we have two residents. Uh, one resident had a rent increase. The other one didn't. The one found out that theirs was increased and uh, the neighbor's wasn't. And now is calling uh, the office to find out why. So let's take a look at the scene and uh, we'll get your comments on it afterwards. Mrs. Yoon is on the phone. She's upset that she got a rent increase. Did you explain that rent increases are written into the lease she signed? The problem is that she says Mrs. Weller next door didn't get a rent increase when her lease was renewed. I'm looking in Mrs. Weller's file and I can see that she didn't get a rent increase, but I don't see any documentation as to why. All right, Kathy. So what do you think about that scenario? Well, that is a classic one. Um, and think about it from a fair housing investigator's viewpoint. So let's say Miss is, Mrs. Yoon is very upset about the fact that she's getting rent increase and she thinks it's because of her race. And if she has a different race than Mrs. Well Weller, her neighbor next door, who she knows got her lease renewed with out a rent increase, what does that look like? Right. Now, I'm sure there was a reason for that. Why Ms. Weller did not get a re, uh, rent increase and Mrs. Yoon is going to get a rent increase. But if that is not somehow properly documented in the file, then whoever made that decision won't know a year from now when it's being investigated. And remember, it takes that long in most cases before an investigator is ever gonna look in those files. So there were a couple of failures here. Uh, the first failure was whoever decided that Ms. Weller was not going to get a rent increase should have documented why if in most cases, when a lease is renewed, there is a rent increase. Why did she not have one? Whatever that reason is, definitely needs to be documented. So that was a failure. Uh, the second failure was that that mistake wasn't caught. Mm -hmm. And who knows how long ago it happened, but if it wasn't caught and corrected, then I would say that is a, a compliance review failure to correct that deficiency in the file. And without that correction, this will look like a fair housing violation. Now, probably isn't, but that's how it will appear. So I think what we're talking about is this is a matter for training, 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 yeah. certainly on when to document and what the documentation needs to look like. I think we all assume everyone knows what documentation looks like. And I, my experience has been that is not common sense. So you have to teach people what is the documentation that needs to be there. And then you teach whoever it is, the supervisors or the compliance people, what they should look for when they're reviewing files. And certainly one thing I would always review is how was the amount of rent determined 
or the amount of rent increase determined. And if it varies between residents, that needs to be explained in the file. So that's just one of those things I talked about earlier uh, that could easily become a fair housing violation and therefore should be the topic of some compliance or supervisory review. Yeah, very nice. Thank you for that explanation. And like we said, uh, everyone, we're going to have a, a nice list available in the on our blog and on the sh on the show notes as well, giving you some other potential scenarios and some things that you should be checking for. Uh, so thank you, Kathy, for that explanation. And, you know, it just makes you know it's just common sense, but sometimes it's you know there are easily overlooked items that may not be given as much due diligence, but. In the context of this conversation, the purpose of the show, you're here for education. Let's make sure, do those checks, see how your compliance department is doing. And, and if you're having those audits and making sure those checks take place. So thank you, Kathy, for your feedback. Thank you everyone again for being here. We appreciate your support of this channel. We love all the comments that we get, especially in our YouTube channel. And some uh, ping us on the side, and we thank you for your support. Uh, please be sure to share this episode with your team and give them an opportunity to share what challenges that they're facing on site, whether or not they have questions about your compliance uh, you know, checks and, and how things are going along that line. So we thank you for being here. This has been episode 36. We'll see you guys on our next episode. Take care, everyone.